Vimati Dhenama Vitriyavato Ano Divo Brahata Parvata Dasarasvati Yajata Ganto Yajnam Pagde Vyenamaha Suprabhatam We are reciting the different verses of Raja Yoga, the path of willpower. It's a very practical guide for the Ashtanga Yoga, what Patanjali has mentioned. If you look at each and every verse, we can draw the entire essence of Patanjali Yoga Sutra, which is beautifully portrayed by Maharshi Patanjali in 196 aphorisms. Bhagavan Krishna has summed up the essence of the entire yoga practice here. Let us go through the some of the verses for the deeper understanding of the shloka here. As we have understood in the previous lecture, the mind is responsible for both bondage as well as the freedom. Until and unless you have the control over the mind, channelize the mind in a proper way, the yoga can't advance in further. That's why Krishna very clearly says, Bandhuratma Manastasya Yenatmai Vatmana Jitaha. So, the mind is a friend as well as the foe, the Shatru as well as the Mitra. So, we have to convert our mind as a friend because most of the time we have negative attitude or negative imposition or our self we thought inferior and most of the time what happens any failure comes we blame on others but whereas the success comes we climb ourselves so whenever you get success or the failure for both of them it is the mind responsible but what happens Always we look further or the external for the situations of the people to be responsible for the failures. No. That's why the mind itself is a friend as well as an enemy. So, being friendly with yourself, Maitri Bhava, you should have the Maitri Bhava yourself first. Then only you can convince the mind for the further sadhana. So, once you have achieve the state of the friendliness with your mind, then what are the next steps Krishna says? Apane yukvati pranam prane panam tatha pare prana pana gati rudva pranayama parayanaha. You should go for the practice of pranayama abhyasa, the pranayama practice. Because until and unless you are steady with the posture as well as the cleanly atmosphere, the pranayama will not help you. Say example, if you consider the city like, the major developed cities like Delhi or Bangalore, any metropolitan cities, they are full of the pollution. Even if you practice very deeper practices of pranayama and all, instead of inhaling the, the, the pure oxygenated air, we are going to Inhale only the polluted air itself. That's why the previous verse also very clearly says, Shuchau Deshe Pratishthapya Sthiramasana Matmanaha. You have to choose a very cleanly and neat place. Shuchau Deshe. What is that Shuchau Deshe? There is a cleanliness must be in the surrounding environment, in the whole atmosphere. Whenever the atmosphere supports for your sadhana, then there is no problem. That's why one has to choose a very clean place where the entire atmosphere is pure, free from all the contaminations. Chuchau deshe pratishthapya sthiram asanam atmanaha. We have understood the concept of asana from Patanjali Yoga Sutra. He says sthiram sukham asanam. Here also Krishna insists sthiram asanam atmanaha. We have to establish in anyone meditative posture, how it is samankayam shirogrivam. Whenever you sit in any physical posture, 
the spine, neck as well as the head must be in one straight line. Sthiram, Asanam, Atmana. So once you are established in the Asana, having chosen the place of the cleanly place, then what you have to do? Nātya Chritam, Nāti Nītam, Chaila, Ajina, Usha, Uttaram. It says, even for sitting also, you have to choose the place. Na Ati Ucha, Na Nīcha means the place should not be very high as well as too low. You have to choose a very moderate place where you sit. It may, it, according to the Hatha Yoga text, it says, you should not go for the higher altitudes like peak, Himalayan peaks, not even too much undergrounded. There should be a moderation in the place. Not only that, the moderation in the sense, whenever you sit for your practice, the seat where you sit, that should be very moderate height. And it is followed by three things. What? Chaila, Ajina, Kusha. So here it is the skin as well as the piece of cloth and the grass mat. So these three things are suggested to sit for the meditation. Chaila, Dina, Kusha, Dharam. So once you choose the place and having settled down in any one of the meditative posture, then you should go for the practice of pranayama. So before we aiming for the higher or the higher results of the pranayama, it is not just practice gives the result, but also you should follow the a proper and disciplined lifestyle. So what is that lifestyle? Beautifully brought out the yoga lifestyle as yuktahara viharasya, yukta cheshtasya karmasu, yukta sapnama bodhasya, yoga bhavati dukkaha. So that yoga will free you from all the miseries, all the problems, all the bandages, or all the disorders or the diseases, whenever you follow four factors as far as yoga lifestyle is concerned. So what are those four factors? Yuktahara, moderation in food. We should know how, when we should eat, what to eat, how to eat, the quantity, everything must be known. If you look at the nature, they strictly disciplined their food uh, habits. Nowhere in the nature, the animals or the creatures or the bird will not disobey the rule of nature. But whereas human beings, always we go for indiscipline in everything. We never follow the discipline at all. Whether you are hungry or not, the time, whenever you, whenever the time reaches, either breakfast time or the lunch time or the dinner time, naturally the mind will pull to the dining hall. And in between, we keep on taking some snacks or drinks or something, always keep on going, going, going. So this means there is no discipline in the food at all. And whatever we eat, that also must be known. Sattvika Ahara, Krishna beautifully says, Ayusattva Balarogyam Sukha Preeti Vibardhana Rasya Sikta Sthira Hadya Ahara Sattvika Priya. A yogi or a yoga practitioner must go for most sattvic food so that he can get more success in the practice of yoga. That's why Ahara must be moderate. The food must be very moderate. If you go for more and more eating, Hatha Yoga says, if you go for more eating, that destroys the yoga. You said, yoga vinashyate, you atyahara. If you go for more eating, that itself leads to the letharginess, drowsiness, and the, the, the sleepiness. That's why ahara must be very disciplined. As far as yoga way of life is concerned, one must stick on to the discipline of the food. This is the first rule in the yoga. Second aspect is yukta vihara. The more and more traveling or more walking or more sanchara must be avoided. Because a sadhaka, if he sits in a particular place, if he thinks on traveling and traveling, his routine will be disturbed, his food style will be disturbed, his sadhana is also get disturbed. That's why much traveling must be avoided by a sadhaka. If you 
resolve for sadhana, you must stick on to a very particular place, not in heaven, travel too much, you should focus on the sadhana. That's why Yukta Vihara, the traveling, that's why all our yogis, the great masters, they have settled down for number of years for their continuous sadhana. If you look at any yoga master, either the Paramahamsa Yogananda, Ramana Maharshi, since the time immemorial, they have dedicated the whole lifetime for sadhana. So, that's why what they were doing, just settle down in one single place and continue their sadhana. So, they were abiding the traveling much. Yukta Vihara. Yukta Cheshta, the actions what we perform must be must be executed without much exertion of the mental tension or the pressure or the stress. And also, whatever the body supports and whatever the nature you have, you have to take up the same kind of actions or the activities so that you will be happy. If you go against your nature, that will create a tension. What is that nature? So we have the inborn or instincts, qualities, either the, the qualities of a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, according to Krishna in Gita, it says it is based on our nature of the actions. The Vibhaga is done. So whenever you choose the actions, it must give happiness. You understand very clearly, whenever you are unhappy, more tense or more pressure, that action is against your nature. If you choose the action and you can continue the same action for a longer period without having any exertions of the mind. So this is the way we have to understand. If you can love yoga, if you practice for more than 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, you will not get tired at all. So this is the way we have to choose our actions. How to choose? According to our Subhava, according to the scriptures, whatever they have insisted, we have to choose the actions. This is called Yukta Cheshta. And Yukta Sapna Avabhoda, most important as far as yoga is concerned, you have to fix the sleeping time as well as wake up time. Because of modern technological advancement, because of electrification and electronics, gadgets all over the world, we have accustomed and addicted to the electronic instruments like our social media and we keep on postponing our sleep. Nowadays, if you look at the most of the people, they are more wakeful and very active after 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock rather than the daytime. Why? Because the moment you go through the electronic gadgets of the TV, serials, movies, social medias, naturally the melatonin hormone which is secreted by the pineal gland which is responsible for the sleep which will not get secreted and so that you will keep on postponing the sleep. And once you avoid the sleep at the right time, then you may not feel the sleep for further 2, 3, 4 more hours. So because of this, lot of Psychological disorders are found in the major adolescent students especially. You forget about the elders or the children, but the adolescent students, they are drastically and they are facing lot of psychological abnormalities only because of postponing the sleep. That's why sleeping time must be fixed and also the wake up time. The moment you postpone the sleep, naturally you cannot get up early in the morning. You look at the all the ITBT sectors and technological advancement uh, uh, employees. They will work like a donkeys for five days continuously. Work, 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 work for five days. And rest of the two days, they wanted to be free. They wanted to go out like the five days are workaholic and rest of the two days are alcoholic. <laughs> two days they go for weekend and drink and do everything. All nonsense. So what is the lifestyle it is? And the people who are going for weekend days, they won't get up until 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, they have deep slumber and sleep. So this is the most haphazard and hopeless lifestyle we are following. That's why as far as yoga is concerned, yoga practitioner and professionals are concerned, we have to stick to the, the discipline. What is the discipline? The moderation in food, 
moderation in activities, moderation in traveling, also moderation in sleep. If you follow these four factors, this is the right way of understanding the yoga way of life. That's why Krishna says, it is not just practice advanced asanas, advanced pranayama will give you the result, but you must stick on to the lifestyle of yoga. Then only, without much effort, whatever you are desiring for the results out of yoga, one can achieve. That's what Krishna clearly says, you must stick on to the yoga lifestyle. Once you have chosen the place, settled down in asana, and also you are following the strict discipline of yoga, then what next? Tatraikagram manakritva yata chitte driya kriya upavishyasane yunja yoga matma vishuddhage. So, once you settle down, what next? Tatraikagram manakritva. You have to focus on any one of the place of the either the universal or the physical body. If you choose any meditative object, you have to choose where to meditate. Patanjali has suggested number of methods on the murdha, the eyebrow center, agnya chakra, or on the breath, or on the throat reason, or on the heart center, or the nabhi, or swadhishthana chakra. There are lot of centers in the physical body where you can focus. But the beginners must focus on only the breath because it is the lively experience you can experience with the breath. The moment you focus and attentive with the breath, naturally your mind will be focused on the breath so that the mind will be free from all the thoughts, thought process and external affairs. That's why just focus at the breath, at the tip of the nostril, just observe and be absorbed with this spontaneous and natural breathing and slow down the breath, slow down the breath, slow down the breath. When the breath becomes absolutely slow, then it is very easy to focus on the desired meditated object. Either you take any deity or any center or any chakra, whatever it is, but you have to slow down the breath. So this is the way naturally you will be attuned to the meditation, attuned to the yoga practice. That's why very slowly and gradually we have to settle down and slow down the breath and slowly you have to focus on the Atma Tattva. What is that Atma Tattva? Don't think of the ultimate reality of the God. So Patanjali beautifully brought out, when you, when you slow down the breath, slowly you can attune yourself with one Eka Tattva, one principle. You stick on to one principle of practice. So that one principle, he says, Tat Pratishedartham Eka Tattva Abhyasaha. To overcome all the obstacles or the, the disturbances of the, the mental pattern, you can stick on to one principle that one tattva is nothing but Ishvara. That Ishvara is represented by Omkara or Pranava. Tasya Vajaka Pranava Tat Japastadarta Bhavanam. Beautifully, Patanjali says, what is that one tattva, one principle you focus on? the practice of Omkara or the Pranava. Because that is the only one universal remedy, Pinesya, for overcoming all the problems, whatever we have carried from this time, this, uh, since the time immemorial. That Pranava only is the solution the people who takes for the path of Yoga Sadhana. You may go for other, no doubt, you may go for Japa of other deities, you may go for Chakra Sadhana, you may go for any other practices, but ultimately the pranava or the om is recommended by not only Patanjali, even Krishna om ityekaksharam brahma vyaharan mamamsmaran. O oh Arjuna, thinking me as an ultimate reality of the Brahman, you focus and do meditation on omkara, he says. And all the Upanishads insisted the practice of yoga with the omkara. That's why the yoga at the, at the meditation level, you must focus on Om or the Pranava. That's what Patanjali beautifully brought out. This Pranava Sadhana is, goes with different techniques again. And strictly speaking, the Upanishad says, Pranava Upasana or the Omkara Sadhana is only recommended for the sannyasis, those who are willing to achieve Moksha, the realization. But for the common people, 
it is not recommended, but still we are chanting. That means we are not aiming at the higher goal. Just we are aiming to overcome some of the mental tension problems and to stabilize our health only. So whatever you are designing for, that will be achieved, no doubt. But the sannyasis, the monks, are the great yoga masters. They focus on the reality so that it will give the, uh, the uh, design result. So here, the common people, Upanishad says, you can go with the, the chanting of Akara, Ukara, Makara. There are two ways of chanting or Upasana. One is Samastha Upasana, that is Omkara chanting. Second one is Vesta Upasana, that is the syllables of Omkara, that is what? Akara, Ukara, Makara. In Mandukya Karika, the Gurus of Guru, Gaudapada Acharya of Shankaracharyas, Guru's Guru, he has beautifully brought out for all common people, it is Vesta Upasana, that is chanting of Akara, Ukara, Makara. You can take it up for the success in the path of yoga. But for the real sannyasis, they go for only Samastha Upasana, that is Omkara, Pranava Upasana. That's why even Patanjali also says, the Pranava Upasana, it is only the people who are wishing for Kaivalya or the liberation. But as a common people, we can go through number of other practices. That's why, why? Because we cannot reach the goal. We cannot step into the eighth step immediately or instantly. We have to take in a very gradual manner. Shanai, Shanai, Parame, Buddhya, Tritigrahi, Slowly and gradually, you have to go through some exercises, breathing exercises, then prana, then asanas, then stabilize the asana or postures, then slowly again, go with the pranayama, go with the advanced pranayama and kumbhaka pranayama, then go with the meditation. Like that, we have to gradually move in the path of sadhana. So this is the way sequence we must understand. According to Bhagavad Gita or Yoga Sutra or Hatha Yoga, we have to follow a sequence from the beginning so that our yoga will be more successful. Thank you. Settle down in any meditative posture. Keep your spine erect. Neck and head in one single line. Close your eyes. <coughs> Relax the whole body. Observe the whole body from toes to the head and let it be free from all tension and stiffness. Prayatna Shaitilya Tananta Samapati Bhyam Patanjasis. You must relax your effort in whichever the posture you are in. So there should be no effort at all to adopt posture. Very natural and spontaneously, the body must get relaxed. Slowly bring your attention at the tip of the nostrils. For few rounds, deeply inhale and exhale. With effort, inhale deeply and exhale. Let the mind be focused with deep inhalation and exhalation. And slowly relax your effort with the breath. Let it become very slow and steady. <laughs> Without your effort, observe the breath now. 
feel the inhalation and exhalation. Now let us chant three three rounds of Akara, Ukara, Makara. Three rounds of Akara, inhale deeply. Observe the breath as well as your thought pattern. The mind is calm and quiet, tranquil. <coughs> Feel the silence within. Attune to this beautiful morning ambience of the silence. Silence, let us chant Shanti Mantra for the peace of and harmony of the. 